See, most people are letting the effect be the cause and the cause be the effect. They're living their life totally ass backwards. You know, we've got to get to the cause. Who is the cause? Me, my thinking, my attitude, my discipline, my actions. That's when we allow the big money to come and we allow it to come in a big way. I don't care if somebody's morning routine is 20 minutes. If it is a focused 20 minutes, it is much more powerful than an unfocused 90 minutes. Like I want you to really pay attention to this. I told you your spiritual DNA is absolutely perfect and you're a mass of energy that, that functions on frequencies. Everything is a frequency. You are a frequency. You know, you have more power in your pinky than you have any idea of what that pinky has inside of it that it can do. But most people are letting the outside have the power. They don't understand. The outside of spiritual DNA isn't perfect. Your spiritual DNA is perfect and we've got to get this. I want you guys right now, for the next few minutes, think only about your goal. Think only about the image. Image goal, image goal. I want you locking in. Now, a frequency is a level of vibration. You attract what's in harmony with the vibration you're in all the time. And that's called the law of vibration. Now, when you understand that there are an infinite number of frequencies, and every frequency is connected to the one above and below, every single frequency. Now, if you are gonna understand this, that I'm a frequency, and my goal is at a much higher frequency, how do I get there? How do I operate from the frequency of my seven and eight figure image? Well, we've got to understand that this is where you are right now. Take an honest look at where you are in your life. You can see how you get there because you can look backwards now and say, oh, this is what I did or didn't do that got me here, right? Now, your goal is on a much higher frequency. You see there's no lines because we don't know how to get there. We do not know how to get there. Well, I'm going to show you how to get there. The minute you accept that idea and make a decision, what's gonna happen is you start auto suggest, say I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning 200,000 or more every week and I love it. Right away you go to that goal. The problem is you don't stay there because your paradigm is not connected there. Your paradigm is on a frequency much lower. Your image is on a frequency much lower. The moment your belief matches with any state you fuse with it. What does that mean? That means you become one with it. You're not thinking, how can I anymore? You're thinking, I'm already there. I'm just gonna focus on how I can get better. And this union is gonna start showing the how. And the how is gonna be a bunch of failures and successes that is gonna show you how to change it. Now, this is the new home we have to get you to live with. We have to get this as your new home. Now, what does that mean? That means I gotta think and act from this place. That's why I keep hammering you guys on thinking and acting. Thinking and acting, thinking and acting. Well, because until you think and act, you cannot stay at your new home. It will not, you will constantly drop in and out, in and out, in and out. But when you think and act, eventually your subconscious says, okay, I've got this as a belief. Now I'm gonna work in your favor. Now I can serve you. Now I'm clear you're not sending me a double binding message anymore. And as you become observant, what does observant mean? You're aware of your thinking. You're aware of your environment. You're aware of what the cause is. You're aware of what the effect is. Then your reality is gonna shape the model of your imagination. We are using that higher fact with the imagination all the time. But when you move to a higher frequency, you're gonna constantly be communicating a world totally Four into your five senses. Your five senses is like, see you later. I don't know what's going on here. And it is totally detached. Well, what's open? Your subconscious. What are you dumping in there? Now you're dumping in all the time where you used to be dumping in what you didn't want. You're dumping in all the time that new image. Well, when you move to a considerably higher frequency of thought, you accept that idea. That's why we can't accept any idea that is not in harmony with what we don't want. We only accept ideas and feelings that are on the frequency of what we want. And at any suggestion, and this is where hard, this is where I say hard, you have to get better at hard. When your paradigm is fighting you, because it's gonna fight you, it's gonna say, see, this isn't working. You say, no, I do not accept that. You've gotta be very stern to it. You've gotta say, stop screwing around here. I've done it your way, I'm not doing it. And when you do that, Right there, you just took conscious control of the paradigm and you're gonna remove and replace it. 
and then what's going to happen, all of a sudden the how is going to show itself. You can always connect the dots looking forward, excuse me. You know, and when you do that, you're going to start seeing the how. Guess what? Oh, all of a sudden you see it. Then you, you're going to see your reality. Some of you have already seen it. You know, there's so many people who are seeing it. You know, and what happens is you could have gone there. You could have even gone further. And that's the beauty of this. Now, you know, I will tell you, we always talk about controlling the flow. When we control the flow of thought energy, we're letting it flow freely to and through us. I want you to control the flow. Make a decision today from this moment on, I am controlling the flow no matter what. I am not letting my paradigm control the flow. And this is the most important idea that you can impress in your subconscious mind. That any idea that is held in the mind, that is emphasized, that is feared or revered will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate physical form available. Look at this. I have a suggestion of, and that suggestion is either positive or negative. If I am not getting absolutely magical at rejecting ideas, I'm accepting every idea. And if I'm accepting ideas of what I don't want, guess what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be in harmony and dumping what I don't want constantly into my subjective mind. And when I do that, I'm turning the desire to what I don't want much stronger than what I want. And guess what? This is attitude. It's in harmony with whatever suggestion you give it, which is gonna dictate your results. What did Carnegie said? He said, any idea held in the mind. He didn't say, oh, I know what you're talking about. That, that idea you didn't, you didn't really mean. That's not how this works. It's any idea. This is why we have to really focus and practice discipline at a significant level. And I don't care how many times you fall down, get back up. I promise you, the, the price you're paying is gonna be worth it in spades. It is gonna be so worth it where you're gonna be able to look back and say, oh my God, look what's happened. Look what's happened. And that's what, why you have to guard your mind. You cannot let people who constantly talk about what they don't want to be in your circle. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot afford it. You absolutely cannot afford it. And look at your environment, look, are you rejecting those ideas? Because your mind only knows what you give it. And most people are in conversation, they're just accepting what they don't want from somebody else's want. It's not even their want, but they're letting somebody else condition them. And this is where we gotta say, no, I do not accept that. And we've gotta guard our mind. The only thing you do is you accept ideas that are in harmony. And that's gotta be part of your standard. Now, in order to do that, you've got to make a definite decision. Like, this is where I'm going. And if I'm going there, I can't go there 20% of the time. This is where I'm going. This is absolutely where I'm going. And when paradigms stay in control, nothing changes. If you want your income to change, your paradigm has to be altered. And if you want to create consistency, and I want the people who are really not consistent to really pay attention to this, you've got to set daily goals. You've got, to, you've got to get so in love with that daily goal, and I don't care if you achieve it or not, you keep setting them, keep setting them. Eventually, it's gonna be your new paradigm because you're putting so much controlled attention on it. When we put controlled attention on anything, it's the repetition that gets us to course correct and find the solution. And as we do that, the paradigm changes. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to this. If you allow your results to control you, you have no shot to achieve your dream. And if that controls your attitude, that's gonna create the same image that's gonna be in harmony with the same image in your subconscious mind that produces the same vibration, which creates the same results. And guess what happens? Your dream goes away. Your dream absolutely goes away. See you later. Nice to see you. Oh, I'll do it next Monday. I'll start again. Now, this is everything to thinking and acting. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. I want you to really see this. It takes an educated mind to be able to, to not let the outside control you is what Aristotle's saying. That's what I've been saying for weeks. Now, this is absolutely, it, it's the key. It is the absolute key because we've been raised our whole life the other way. And this is what we have to do. 
You've got to, I want you to think about your want right now. What do I really want? What do I really want? Now, am I operating nine out of 10 times throughout the day as that person? That'll give you an idea of how quickly your results are coming or going. Or if you're taking two steps forward, three steps back, that'll tell you. Am I letting my weekly pay or my bi-weekly pay or whatever I'm paying my employees, whatever's going on, we always come from what do I want? Well, how do I build it? I build my imagination. Now, what did we talk about? I want you guys to really understand desire. This is the rocket fuel. You have a power flowing in and through you and you have a want. The want doesn't automatically turn into a desire. Most people's wants flee away. They say, ah, oh, it's not gonna happen, they let it go. Then they go to the next shiny object, let it go. They go to this shiny object, let it go. I wanna ask, what is it that you really want? and you dump that want through repetition of thinking, acting, and seeing yourself as that person. And what happens, that want grows in to a desire. Desire comes from the essence of who we are. And that desire is the rocket fuel on your back. That is what, you know, you'll know when somebody has a sense of urgency. They have a sense of urgency because they have a reason to have a sense of urgency, and that's because they have a desire. They don't just have a weak desire, what do we say? We've created a clear and definite mental picture of what we want. When we create that definite picture of what you want, you, you transmit the idea effortlessly to your subconscious. And that's when we enter in the spirit of it. And when we enter in the spirit of it, it is game over. It is game over because you fall in love, so you harmonize on a conscious level, you're harmonizing your image on a subconscious level, and you're harmonizing your image on a physical level. That's what the it is. And now, are you into the spirit of your attitude towards yourself? Are you in love with the attitude towards yourself? Are you in the spirit of the definiteness of your goal? Is your goal going back and forth because of the outside? Are you in the spirit of leaving every single person better off than you found them? Do you really find that so liveliness within you when you're leaving everyone better off? Or if somebody watched you, are you a conditional giver? If you didn't see that somebody, they came back to report me, would they say you're a conditional giver? Are you in the spirit of really getting locked in, being laser focused with everything you do? Are you in the spirit of understanding money and your relationship to money that it's not good or bad? You know, that you do so much good with the money. Are you in the spirit of that? Or are you holding your money really tight? Are you in the spirit of acting on ideas right away. You have an idea, you act. You don't wait, you don't go get approval. And I will tell you, you act on as many ideas as you can. Are you in the spirit of a sense of urgency? Do you have that limitless attitude that you've got that rocket fuel on your back that just says go? Are you in the spirit of sprinting towards your insecurity? Are you in love with that like I am? Are you absolutely in love with running to him because you understand that's one of your greatest gifts? Are you in the spirit of aligning your talk with what you do? Well, if it isn't, we've got to adjust that. We've got to get in the spirit of being able to adjust it. And are you in the spirit of using your superpower? This is what's going to take you from where you are to where you want to go.